To compose an image is to create an everlasting metaphor. Cinema in its purest form is visual storytelling, and the best cinema can tell a story through something as simple as the arrangement of an image. Staging, framing, depth, balance. How do you present space? Out of all of the disciplines that coincide under the umbrella of cinematography, I wouldn't have much hesitation in saying that composition is the field's most fundamental principle. Why do I think this? Because deciding the placement of subjects through the viewfinder of a camera isn't merely a technical decision, it's an expressive one. In a nutshell, composition is simply how the elements inside the frame are positioned and exhibited to the viewer. It's a skill of knowing what to show and what not to show, as well as how to show it, or how not to show it. By intentionally directing the structure within a frame, you enhance the meanings of whatever it is you want to say with whatever canvas you want to work with. Most of the application of composition revolves mainly around visual necessity, those checkboxes that need to be ticked when arranging the visual elements of an image. Is there enough lighting? Does the staging block any important visual information? Case in point as to why composition is a necessary technical skill when constructing any image. Without it, films would be a sensory overload of information without structure, but with it you gain focus. However, as an art, it shouldn't be approached exclusively with pragmatism, because it's not just where we place our subjects of interest, but why. What can we say with composition? A millennia of visual artists have realised successful compositional templates that are used to this day. We still see the rule of thirds, golden ratio, triangular composition. They're tried and tested formulas to make an image pleasing to the eye. Yet when the rules that define an area of study are practically ingrained within our minds, it can be very difficult to demonstrate versatility. Be that as it may, compositional variety isn't the focus here, but what do these compositions say? And what can you say when you go against this formula? That's what we want to find out. If the Kuleshov effect and Sergei Eisenstein helped us discover that editing was the tool to create meaning across multiple pieces of film, then composition was how we could tell our stories with one single shot. The visual arts exist far beyond film and have endured a much more extensive lifespan. In the grand scheme of things, cinema is still a relatively new art form, and cinema took influence during its infancy from the existing mediums in order to understand its role in the artistic landscape. Many early directors and filmmakers either directly hailed from theatre, or at the very least were influenced by the form, yet the impact this had on composition couldn't be ignored. Because of how different film was, composition didn't even occur to many filmmakers, instead techniques were imported directly from theatre. Often, all of the actors would face towards the camera as they would an auditorium. And because the projection of film was presented in two dimensions, the images themselves were also presented as such, typically never harnessing the depth of an image. Framing wasn't standard practice, and thus composition of early cinema was almost identical for every shot. In fact, many films were just that, one shot. However, once filmmakers realised that cameras didn't need to be locked down in one spot, and once the technology that was propelling the art form improved, the imagination of filmmakers began to flourish. Where composition was once a last minute imitation of the conventional setups of other mediums, now it was being championed by artists such as Fritz Lang and the German Expressionists, who became pioneers of using composition for tonal leverage. Wide angles became keynotes for epics, whereas canted angles and crooked shapes were synonymous with horror. Camera movement became less restrictive, and could capture excitement like never before. And artists like Carl Dreyer found that a close-up could capture the subtle nuances of an actor's performance. Through newfound methods of composing shots, the emotional prospects of film had changed forever. Composition became a technique that could infuse both meaning as well as visual splendor. So how is it used today? I think people confuse pretty with good cinematography. What was it Freddie Francis says it was good cinematography and bad cinematography, and then there's the cinematography that's right for the movie. And uh, I often feel that actually if, if people, if reviewers don't mention your work, it's probably better than if they do. I think that composition can be divided into two separate objectives. The first is to attract the audience's attention. At its most rudimentary core, composition exists as a tool to accentuate the focal elements of an image. What should the viewer be looking at? and how do we get them to look at it? 
Every image requires systems to guide the eyeline of the audience. These are what are known as compositional influencers, and their primary purpose is to use visual devices to highlight key subjects. But why use them solely to control sight when they can also create very interesting subtext? A good example is the frame within a frame, which if you look out for, you'd be surprised at just how often they're used. Human beings are prone to find order where there may be none, and frames in cinema work to help the elements appear in a much more uniformed manner. They tend to dilute the external details of an image, and our eyes are drawn to them because within the frame lies order, and hopefully our main subject. But through this technique emerges deeper implications. These frames are often used as a partition to separate. So for subtext, why not use this separation to symbolize the different worlds beyond both sides of the frame? It can show a contrast as simple as freedom versus isolation, or show that by passing through the frame, we see a character's decision to pursue a lifestyle, contrasted to those lifestyles that other characters are denied entry to. But I think the most interesting use of the frame composition arises when you don't think exclusively as a frame. I mean, we all know that doorways and windows are good objects to create this composition, but things get really thought-provoking when you think of how anything can be created into a border for your subject. Then it becomes an instance of showing whether your subject is in an open frame or a closed frame. For instance, in The Graduate, our main character is constantly pressured, and we see this as the border is constantly closed by the people around him. Composition isn't just about aesthetic quality, but creating meaning, and any compositional influencer can be used in such a way. One of the most popular techniques used in composition is lines of perspective. We tend to follow lines in reality, as well as in an image, especially if they all share the same point of convergence, which in compositional terms would typically be your subject of focus. However, your concentration should lie on how they converge. Use lines to pin your character in a corner, showing them trapped under the circumstances we find them in. Or have lines that highlight your subject, but converge away from them showing the emergence of a new path on their journey. Lines are simply optional in creating a one-point perspective. Simply showing the mise-en-scene leading towards a character is an alternative, and it can also show them battling against the odds. You get where I'm going with this. There are necessary traits of composing images in order to create a sufficient picture. All of these methods are just different takes of how filmmakers can say, look at this, and all of them achieved through good composition but that doesn't mean that they can't be implemented for added depth. Attracting viewer attention is the core tenant of composition, though if you manage to attract their vision as well as convey a message through the visual elements, then you've done your job very well. However, to gain the most out of a film's composition, it requires what I believe to be a crucial approach to the craft. To fulfill the second objective of composition, you must show us what subject has control of the scene. It seems as though what composition is best at is displaying the power dynamics within an image. The positioning of objects seems to be the greatest way to translate visually the degree of control that characters hold in a scene. But control itself can be categorised into two separate meanings, artificial control and primal control. Artificial control is everything we've spoke about, the control of the aesthetics and where we should be looking. However, primal control is where power dynamics lie. What subject holds more weight in the narrative at that moment in time? This can mean control within interpersonal relationships or between characters and environments. And nothing shows power more than size and scale in an image. Alfred Hitchcock himself said that the size of an object in the frame should equal its importance in the story. Orson Welles was a director that took advantage of this. In this shot from The Lady from Shanghai, Wells used a low angle to make the gun seem larger, infusing it with artificial control as our eyes are drawn to it, and primal control because it appears physically commanding. Similarly, in Touch of Evil, we open with a close-up of a bomb, immediately understanding its importance, and although it recedes from view, it still maintains primal control even when artificial control has shifted. Nothing has dominated the image since. An example of how composition can make something out of sight, but not out of mind. 
However, this line of thought doesn't apply solely to objects in a scene, but characters too. In this shot from Citizen Kane, a young Kane is framed in the far background. Our eyes are drawn to him, granting artificial control, but he's overshadowed in size and surrounded by the adults in his life, giving them the primal control of the scene. Yet later, in an almost identical scene, we see an older Kane dwarfed again. However, as the conversation continues, he walks towards the foreground characters and towers over them. The composition has rearranged its primal control, showing a man that has taken charge of his own destiny. Composition doesn't just have to be focusing on the one shot. It can be a cumulative effort whose meanings emerge over the course of a film, such as how in American Beauty, Lester becomes less insignificant in the image as he takes control of his own life. But size is just one example of presenting primal control as well as how it can change. Primal and artificial control aren't one in the same. The subjects they're allocated to may differ and they can alter in one shot. A character slowly approaching the camera signifies an impending threat and one character shrinking to display another character looming over them is a very popular technique. But typically when we think of powerful character compositions, a couple of images spring to mind. Domination of the frame typically requires that you strip away other details and focus on a single element. A way to enhance this even more is frame centrality. More often than not, when you want a character to appear imposing, give them the centre of the frame. When a subject has the centre, they almost automatically receive artificial control, and in turn, primal control. And if the image is balanced, it denotes that control has no leanings away from our subject which makes balance a good way to instill primal control when there are multiple subjects. A balanced shot can show an interpersonal tug of war, or that two characters are a perfect match for one another, as the connotation is that control is distributed evenly. And so the best way to show conflict and a shift in primal control is to imbalance the image. Hi. Yeah? Prowler needs a jump. And seeing as how we've spoken a lot about things we put into the frame, Let's talk about another essential component of composition, taking things out of the image. Negative space is often used to show the vast expanse of an area. However, on a psychological level, negative space can create apprehension, as we expect something to take place of the void we see. But in terms of characterization, it can be used to create instances of characters that have no hope, shown by the emptiness that lies beyond them, or perhaps the great distance characters must endure to achieve their goal. Just remember that reducing the amount on screen can create unique moods. Less can be more. And there's one major difference in the image composition of film compared to other visual arts. Movement. A salient factor about many of the most iconic and beautifully composed images in cinema is that they're often static. And it's not difficult to understand why. Composition is about geometry and subject placement. And as soon as the camera moves, the lines become morphed and the staging is altered. However, with a technique called reframing, camera movement and composition can complement one another. Through repositioning the camera, you can create two or more single shots, and very creative directors can compose multiple types of shots without even moving the camera. By composing various shots back to back, the tone of a scene can be completely changed. In this shot from Punch Drunk Love, we see this as we switch from a simple conversation to isolation and loneliness. It's just for verification through the credit card company. And this is confidential. Every single shot in cinema uses composition, but those images that haunt us, astound us, they evoke such emotions not just because they're beautiful, but because they carry meaning. Composition can still be used to affect us on a psychological level, and that's how you should think when composing images. What emotions can I display? Create a sufficient structure to your image. Make sure that it's visually pleasing. Find your focal elements and use interesting visuals to highlight them. And then everything else you do from there should be an artistic venture to convey your message. Every subtle change you make in positioning of your framing creates a new emotion. It creates a new piece of art. And all of this achieved through composition, a skill that can make images last forever.